Hi, this is Francis from Easel, and today I wanted to do a video that goes a little more in-depth on the different cut styles in 3D for Easel Pro. We can kind of talk about uh, how they're different, how they work, and just kind of walk, work, work through it um, together. Um, so to start, to access the cut styles on the right-hand side of the Easel uh, 3D and Easel Pro screen, you'll see uh, it'll say model right here and then there'll be some options and then below that there is a option for cut style when i click on that it brings down a menu uh, it, i'm able to change the angle of my finishing tool path either on along the x-axis which is the default 45 degrees on the y-axis or 135 degrees um, and then above that is the three different cut styles full depth cutout rectangle relief and model boundary relief um, full depth cutout is is essentially exactly what it says it is. If I were to generate this toolpath, um, we can see the roughing pass carving out quite a bit of it. We can see if we look at it from the side, it's getting cut out and there are tabs being created. And then if we look at the finishing, we can see that it's moving across the material and those tabs are maintaining. And so essentially you're cutting the, the object out using tabs. You can edit the tabs by uh, moving over uh, to the right-hand side and selecting Edit. Here you can grab the tabs and move them around. You can't add more or less tabs. Uh, you can only uh, adjust them and uh, move them around. Um, and so that's really useful if, if you want tabs in specific spots, maybe where the model's weaker uh, during the carve. You can also opt for not having tabs by just unchecking the Use Tabs feature and that will remove them. Um, and that's essentially how full depth cutout works. Um, if we're looking at rectangle relief, we can see that when I change from full depth cutout to rectangle relief, this new gray square appears, uh, as well as this orange outline. And that is the bounds of my rectangle relief. And essentially what rectangle relief does is it carves out our model to a set depth and then a rectangle around that model uh, to specific distances that you can adjust. So the first thing to note is the gray square indicates, or the gray piece indicates the rectangle itself and also the depth. So if we're looking at it from the side, we can see that that gray uh, square is, or rectangle is kind of at the bottom of my model. If I move over to cut depth, which is right under rectangle relief, I can adjust that dimension. So we'll do uh, 0.25 of an inch. And we can see that that raised it up. And it raised it up a little too far. And I know that because if my model is this shade the, where the boats are, that's going to get carved. If it's this darker shade, it means that the cut depth for the rectangle relief is too high and everything under that is not going to get carved. So I need to adjust my cut depth down. Uh, it looks like 0.3 is going to work just fine. I can see it bisecting my model when I look at it from the side. So I know that my cut depth is good. Uh, there is this orange rectangle, which indicates the uh, padding or the bounds of my rectangle. If I generate this toolpath, we can see that um, as it carves, oh, that's the finishing. Uh, as I, we can see the roughing, it's going to carve out to that orange line, and that's the bounds of my rectangle, which is outside the bounds of my material. So I can adjust that padding, and you can do that right here. And it says padding back, so that would be the top of the model. Change it to 0.4. We'll just change everything to 0.4. You can adjust these uh, individually. You have to adjust them individually, um, but you can the dimensions don't have to be the same. You can change them depending on what you're trying to do. But now when I generate this toolpath, we can see that that orange rectangle is in more and it's it's uh, that's the bounds of my rectangle relief. Um, and the depth is right, everything looks good. If we look at the finishing pass, it's gonna look just fine. And typically the rectangle relief, the rectangle portion of the carve is going to carve uh, or uh, the rectangle portion of the carve is going to carve with the roughing and uh, mostly the 3D model is going to be saved for the finishing bit or the detail on the 3D model will be saved for the finishing bit. So that's a little bit more about rectangle relief. The other cut style is model boundary relief. And this is very similar to uh, uh, 
rectangle relief in the sense that we set a cut depth. Um, so in this case, it's just going to maintain the 0.3 cut depth. And then when I generate my tool path, we can see that it's, it's basically following the, the bounds of my model. And um, if we look at the finishing, it's doing the same thing. Um, but with model boundary relief, essentially we can set one dimension for padding around the model. It's not like a rectangle relief where you're intentionally creating a rectangle. It's more of just padding around the model. So if you, you're just kind of create some space in between the model. So if we can adjust that. I'm gonna go ahead and just do 0.4. Uh, 0.3, uh, and I can generate that toolpath, and we'll take a look at what that looks like. So we can see now that there's space around my model that's being um, carved out. It, it's a little um, difficult to say, but in this case, I think if you've got something that's already a rectangle, like the sign that I've got here, if you've got something that's already a rectangle and you want to do a relief around it, just do a rectangle relief and adjust the padding because that's going to work a little bit better. Model boundary relief is really for objects that are, I would say, more like, let's say, circular in shape or a kind of an odd shape. You can add around a relief around those odd shapes instead of just a, like a, a, just a, a base rectangle. Uh, and that would be the difference in that situation. And, and again, you, you can set that cut depth um, as part of that. And you have to. So it's important to, to kind of be considering those things when you're trying to decide what you want to use. Oftentimes, I think most people are going to use full depth cutout because you're just cutting out an object. Um, but these different cut styles allow you to achieve uh, different things if you're, if you're trying to uh, uh, design certain types of things. And that's just a little bit more about 3D toolpath cut styles. Uh, certainly, if you have any questions, please just let us know in the comments. Have a wonderful day. To learn more, head over to easel.com.